the last one we were working on so I'm just going to start the whole thing over so you don't miss anything so you got this right so what we're going to do here is we're going to talk about how to take this make it so that we can use Pythagorean theorem so instead of using the rectangle I'm just going to focus on the triangle because right triangles is what we use for Pythagorean theorem so we've got our x for our width or one side and then x plus 4 is our length and then we have our diagonal which we want to be 12 and so how what are the dimensions going to be to get that so we're going to use our Pythagorean theorem x squared plus x plus 4 squared equals 12 squared and then we're just going to simplify this you know we went through this part so I'm going to kind of go through this part quickly. And we're just simplifying here. So we end up with x squared plus x squared plus 8x plus 16 equals 144. Simplify the 2x squared. So we get 2x squared plus 8x plus 16 equals 144. We're going to subtract 144 from each side to get everything on one side to use uh, quadratic rules. <clears throat> and so that's going to give us 0 equals 2x squared plus 8x minus 128. Okay, so that's this step right here that we have. So that's that step. That's how we get there. Okay, so from here, it's just simplifying. So I'm going to divide everything by 2 first. And that's going to give me x squared plus 4x minus 64 equals 0. At this point, there are no factors of 64 that subtract to be 4. So we're going to have to use the quadratic formula quadratic formula. I'm going to work that over here a little bit. And so we'll, we'll end up with the opposite of b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And that's what x is going to equal. And so a is 1, b is 4, c is negative 64. And so we'll just plug those values into the quadratic formula, see what we get for x. And so we'll get negative 6, no, excuse me, negative 4, plus or minus square root of b squared, b squared, 4 squared is 16, minus 4 times a, a is 1, so it's really not necessary, times c, which is negative 64, all divided by 2 times a, since a is 1, 2 times 1 is 2. So that simplifies that. Then I'm just going to work in the radical here. So we've got negative 4 plus or minus square root 16 minus 4 times 64. Negative 4 times 64, that's 256. So I'll get 16 plus 256 all divided by 2. And if I simplify that a little further, I'll get negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 272, adding those two together, divided by 2. And now to get what x is, I have to solve both of these. But I'm going to cancel out one because it doesn't make sense. If I take negative 4 and I subtract the square root of 272, I'm going to get a negative value. That doesn't make sense, so I'm not going to use it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my calculator. And I don't have one that I can show you, but I'm, I'm just taking the square root of um, 272 on my calculator. I think it's about 6.25. Or not. That's going to be the final answer. I'm getting ahead of myself. So the square root of 272. That's 16.5 approximately. So, 4 plus 16.5 
all divided by 2 and so I'm going to do that on my calculator 16.5 minus 4 because we're adding negative 4 and if I divide by 2 I'll get approximately 6.25 which if you look you got 6.2 so that's approximately what we got right there and so, how do I get 10.2? Since I have to add 4 to x, 6.2 plus 4 is 10.2. So that's how you get those two answers. So I hope that helps you with that. Okay, the next one. says Juan wants to change the shape of his vegetable garden from a square to a rectangle. So we want to go from a square, which has all sides the same, to a rectangle. And it's going to have the same area. So the area of the two is going to be the same, so that doesn't change anything. So here's the important part. It says the rectangular garden will have a length that is two times the length of the square garden. So that's going to be two times x. Then it says the width will be 16 feet shorter than the old garden. So x minus 16. It says what is the quadratic equation that would model the scenario? So area, uh, since the area is going to be the same, the area of the square is x times x. So x times x is x squared. The area of this garden will be length times width. So we'll have x minus 16 times 2x, or vice versa, however they have it written. And so, and see, they wrote it the opposite way, so that's how we get that model. Okay, so that's that one. And then this last one, this is all from the instruction. It says Juan wants to change the shape of his garden. So it's the same problem, and let's see. Because what is the value of x to make sense in the context? So we're basically solving. So you see they started solving it from here, and we got right here. So we got 0 equals x squared minus 32x. So to get 32 from here, we're going to factor this out, so x times x minus 32, that factors it out. Uh, so x can equal 0, setting this equal to 0, or x can equal 32. This one makes sense, having a length of 0 doesn't make sense. So that's why 32 is the correct answer. And if we go back to the conditions of the problem the width is two times the, the original and so the new garden is going to be and let's go back to that rectangle that I drew so 2x and then x minus 16 so this dimension is going to be 2 times 16 or 2 times 32 which is 64 and then this dimension is going to be 32 minus 16, which is 16. So there's the two dimensions of the rectangle. Okay, so I hope that helps you with that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of just quickly go over some similar problems to what you're going to see in your um, assignment. And so basically I'm just going to kind of go over a standard kind of problem and then you should be able to apply that to whatever it is you're looking at. So right here, if I'm given the vertex and a y-intercept, I can write a function in vertex form. This is vertex form. So the vertex is in the form hk. So that's the important part. So I can plug H and K directly into this function. Now the key here is that this, when I enter it into the equation, 
and I simplify it, it's always going to be the opposite. So if this was negative 4, for example, right here, if that was a negative 4, then when I would put it in, it would be x plus 4 squared. So I hope that makes sense. If not, send me a message, and I'll try to explain it a little more. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute this value in to my function. Now that's not going to be the final step. That's just the first step. So I've got a and then I've got x minus 4 squared plus negative 2. Okay, so that's just substituting this into the function. Okay, now the question is what is a in the function? So now how do I figure out a? So in order to figure out a, you have to be given another point that's on the parabola. And then you're going to use that point to help you write the function. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to substitute those values in. This is x and y. So I've got 30 equals a times x, which is 0. 0 minus 4 squared plus negative 2 or minus 2. And then it's just simplifying and solving. So I've got 30 equals a. 0 minus 4 is negative 4. Negative 4 squared is 16. And then minus 2. So I'm going to add 2 to each side to simplify this. And that gives me 32 equals a times 16 or 16a. And then the solve for a, I'm just going to divide by 16. So I know that a equals 2. So now, you could be asked, what is A? You could also be asked, what is the function? What is the full function? So if you're asked what A is, you're done. If you're asked what the function is, the function would be A equals 2 times X minus 4 squared minus 2. And so that's, that's a kind of a generic problem that you're going to see in your assignment and your quiz. So watch that and, and kind of pay attention and hope that helps you with that. So now, here's another problem. And again, it's a generic problem. I kind of took all the words out, so I'm going to kind of explain what I was asking you to do. So you're given a, a table, and based on the table, you're asked to find the x-intercepts. So the x-intercepts are going to be where the y values, this is x and y, going to be where the y values are 0. So the intercepts are 0 and 16, or you, you could be asked for them as points. So it would be 0, 0, and 16, 0. Either one or correct answers. It just depends on how they want it. So then you're asked to write the function in factored form. Now, factored form comes from the intercepts. The intercepts are the zeros. And what that means, basically, is if you look at... And I'm going to pull in another sheet of paper here. If I were to look at the graph, the intercepts are where it crosses the x-axis. So the parabola, however it's shaped, whether it's shaped like this or the uh, flip the other way, that's going to be the intercepts where they are the zeros so where it crosses the x-axis so that's kind of what that's asking for and so to write this in factored form i know that i have an intercept at zero and i'm going to kind of draw this out real quick i know i have one at zero zero and then one at sixteen zero and so how do i get zero and sixteen for answers well that's going to be x minus zero for that one and this is going to be x minus 16 for this one. Why is it x minus 16 and x minus 0? Because you remember when we did this problem. Well, actually I don't have that problem because that was something we talked about before. But where you uh, set the factors equal to 0 to see what possible values you have. That's what we're doing there. So that's going to be our two factors. So in factored form, this is going to be y equals a. There's always an a there because a is kind of tells you whether it opens up or down and how wide or narrow it is. And then we'll have x minus 0 and then x minus 16. 
That's the factored form of the function. Okay, and from there, you're asked to find A. Well, how do I find A? Well, I take the factored form, and I find an additional point on the graph. Well, I have one additional point right here. I have 816. So I'm going to use that. And so I have y equals a times x, and then x minus 16. I just simplified it a little. I'm going to substitute this point in. So x and y. So y is 16. I don't know a. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Then I have 8, and then I have 8 minus 16. And so now it's just a matter of simplifying again. I've got 16 equals a times 8 times negative 8. 8 times negative 8 is negative 64. And then I'm just going to divide by negative 64. And then so I'll get my value of a to be negative 1 fourth. Okay, once I have A, I can then come back to my factored form, and I can write the function. Okay, and so my function, so this is the function, would be Y equals negative one-fourth times X times X minus 16. <clears throat> So again, that's a generic question. Okay. The next kind of a generic thing is to write is to write a model from a graph. Instead so of write a model from the graph, you either need the vertex in another point, or you need a couple, or you need the zeros in an additional point. So it looks like what we're given here is we're given the vertex and we're given an intercept. So those are good things. We've got two points, one being the vertex. So that's enough to write a model. So in this form, since we know the vertex, we're going to write it in vertex form, which is A times X minus H squared plus K. So what is my vertex? My vertex right there is 4, 1. So when I come and substitute it in, I'll end up with y equals a times x minus 4 squared plus k, which is 1. So now I just need to find a. To find a, I need to use this additional point right here, which appears to be 0, 9. That's the intercept. And so I'll use that. y is 9. I don't know a. I know x is 0. 0 minus 4 squared plus 1. And I'm just simplifying here. 0 minus 4. That is negative 4. Negative 4 squared. 16 plus 1. Now I'm just solving for a. So I'm going to subtract 1. That gives me 8. And then I'm just going to divide by 16. So A equals 1 half. Now you're not done until you do what it says, which is to write the model. Now, something you could be asked is to look at someone's work and see where they made a mistake. So basically what I would do is, you know, we, we've kind of done this before. When they, when they have those kind of questions, we just go through the steps. We compare step to step, see if we can find a mistake. And so from here, we're just going to write our model. Our model goes back to this step, and we're just replacing A with what we found, which is 1 half. So we'll get Y equals 1 half times X minus 4 squared plus 1. Okay. So again, a generic question, like the one you'll see. Okay, now here's another one where you write a model. I did this one because this is a different kind of model. So instead of being given the vertex, this is not the vertex. I'm given a point that's not the vertex. And I'm given two 
intercepts, the two zeros. So I'm going to use the zeros. That one is negative 6, 0. This one is 1, 2, 3, 3, 0. So those are my zeros. So I'm going to write this in what's called factored form. So factored form is y equals a times x minus one factor, x minus the other factor. And so how do I get those two factors? Well, I take this and I say x is negative 6. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve it to get 0. So I'm going to add 6 to each side and end up with x plus 6 equals 0. So that's one factor. I do the same thing over here. x equals 3. I'm going to subtract 3 and get x minus 3 equals 0. And that's my two zeros. So it makes sense to set them equal to 0 and see what you get. So my two factors here are going to be x plus 6. I forgot to put my x. And then x minus 3. Okay. And so that's the model in factored form. Now we need to know what a is so we have a full model. So what I need is my point right here. So my point right there is negative 1, positive 20. So I'm going to substitute that in to help me get A. So 20 equals A times negative 1 plus 6, and then negative 1 minus 3. That's just substituting the X and Y's in. I'll get 20 equals a times, that's going to be 5, and then that's negative 4. Okay, negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 20. And so my a will equal negative 1. And again, since I'm asked to write the model, I'm not done until I write the model, so I've got to take this value, substitute it in where A is, and so I'll get Y equals negative 1 times X plus 6, and then X minus 3. And that's in what's called factored form. Okay, again, a generic question. Okay, now sometimes they just kind of word it out. So that's what this example is. Um, you know that the y-intercept is 0, 1, 9, 2. You have zeros at 8 and 12. What model represents the function? So that's kind of what this question was asking in your assignment. And so it's kind of taking the same thing we just did in the graph and then trying to write the function. So again, kind of to model this out a little bit, I've got zeros at 8 and 12. I've got a y-intercept somewhere way up here at 192. Okay, and so I'm just kind of trying to model where that's going to be. So that's this parabola, however it goes, was probably a little bit further down than that, but that's okay. So that's just our model. And again, we're going to go through the same process, factored form because we know our factors and so over here my factor here is x minus 8 and this is x minus 12 and again same process x equals 12 I'm subtracting 12 from each side to get x minus 12 equals 0 so that's how I get my factors and so in factored form I start off with a times x minus 8 and then x minus 12. Okay, I'm going to substitute what I know, which is that I have a third point at 0, 192. So I'm going to substitute 192 equals a times 0 minus 8, 0 minus 12.
And so we'll end up with 192 equals a times negative 8 times negative 12. 8 times 12 is 96. Negative 8 times negative 12 would be negative or positive 96. So 192 equals a times 96. <clears throat> and then we'll take 192 divided by 96. And so we'll end up with a equals 2. And again, you're not done until you write the function. So again, we're going to take this 2. We're going to bring it right into there. And so our function will be y equals 2 times x minus 8, x minus 12. So just follow that process each time. There's two different forms. There's factored form and vertex form. There are others, but they're focused on those two in this modeling unit. So just know those two forms. And then finally, there's going to be a word problem, kind of like this. It says the population of a town can be represented using the quadratic model, using a quadratic model. The maximum population, now that's the key word for vertex. So if you see maximum or minimum, understand that's the vertex. So the maximum was 8,000 and it occurred 20 years after the record keeping began. So that point, time is always the x value, so that would make population the y value, it says that later. So our point right there is 20 and then 8,000. <clears throat> so that's our vertex. And it says nine years later, so nine years later would be 29. The population was 7,838. So we've got a vertex and we've got an additional point, not the vertex. So that's enough to write the model. So our model begins, since we have a vertex, we're going to use vertex form. Put your values in for H and K. Okay. Use the point that we're given. And your numbers in the problem are going to be a little bit easier. I was trying to figure this out real quick so I could get a problem started. And so we've got A, and then X is 29, so 29 minus 20 squared plus 8,000. And now it's just a matter of simplifying to find out what A is. So I end up with 78, 38 equals A times 29 minus 20 is 9. 9 squared is 81. So now I'm going to subtract 8,000 from 78,38. So I'm doing that on my calculator. 78,38 minus 8,000. That gives me negative 162 equals A times 81. I'm going to divide by 81 on each side. And if I divide negative 162 by 81, I'll get that A equals negative 2. Okay. And so again, it's, it's asked um, which equation represents the scenario. So we're not done until we take this and put it into our function, which is right there. So we'll end up with y equals negative 2 times x minus 20 squared plus 8,000. So I hope this helps you with the assignment. If it doesn't, like always, just make an appointment for a help session and we'll go back through some things.